For context, this happened when I was 16. It was the first time I was staying home alone overnight. My parents had gone on a weekend trip to celebrate their anniversary, leaving me to enjoy a couple days of freedom. They trusted me, and I wasn't about to break that trust by throwing a party or doing anything else reckless. Instead, I planned a quiet weekend of video games, movies, and junk food. The first day passed without incident. I played video games until late, watched some movies, and then crashed. It was the second night when things took a turn. A storm was raging outside, which wasn't unusual for this time of year, but it added to an eerie atmosphere for the night. The wind howled outside, and the rain hit the windows relentlessly. I was in the middle of binging the Saw movies when the power suddenly went out. I fumbled for my phone to use its flashlight. The house was suddenly silent, with the storm outside also going silent. I went to the kitchen to grab some candles and matches that we kept in a drawer. As I lit a few candles, the sound of the storm seemed to grow louder and louder. I told myself it was just the wind, but it did feel strange. Returning to the living room, I decided to camp out on the couch with some blankets. The glow of the candles kept me calm. I must have dozed off because the next thing I knew, there was a loud bang from upstairs that jolted me awake. Heart racing, I listened closely, trying to convince myself that it was just a window left slightly open or a tree branch against the house. But then I heard it. A soft, unmistakable creak of floorboards from upstairs. It sounded like footsteps, slow and deliberate. Every horror movie I'd ever seen flashed through my mind. This is how people die in those movies, I thought. But then, rationality took over. It's an old house, it's just settling, I reasoned. I grabbed my phone and dialed my friend Alex. No answer. I tried again, my heart sinking as the call went straight to voicemail. The footsteps seemed to move from one room to another, and then they started down the stairs. That's when I really started to freak out. Someone or something was in the house with me. I remembered my dad's advice. If you ever feel scared or threatened, go to my office. There's a lock on the door and a phone. I crept towards the office, avoiding the moonlit parts of the house where I'd easily be seen. The footsteps continued, but now they were on the ground floor. Reaching my dad's office, I shut the door as quietly as I could and locked it. The room felt safe, with my dad's desk and bookshelves filled with volumes of history and other old literature. I found the phone, but my hands were shaking so badly I barely managed to dial 911. The dispatcher's voice was a lifeline. 911, what's your emergency? There's someone in my house, I whispered, voice trembling. I'm home alone. Please send someone. Stay on the line. Help is on the way. Can you tell me where you are in the house? I explained as best I could, my voice barely above a whisper, terrified that whoever was in the house with me would hear. As I spoke, the footsteps stopped. Everything went silent. Then, a voice, barely audible, sang a haunting song. It sounded like it was coming from right outside the door. Never been that scared in my life. I covered my mouth to stop myself from crying, praying for the police to arrive quickly. The slow singing suddenly stopped, replaced by a scratching at the door. The 911 dispatcher was asking questions, but I couldn't even talk, I was so scared. And then, as suddenly as it had begun, it stopped. Moments later, the sound of sirens approached, growing louder and louder until they filled the world outside. They arrested her. It was a woman who escaped from the psychiatric ward just two days prior. How she got into our house, I have no idea. I never spent another night alone in that house. We moved two months later. The summer I turned 14 was the first time I'd ever been left completely on my own. My family had to attend a distant relative's wedding, which was a long five hours away in Georgia. Given my hatred for long car rides, I opted to stay behind on our farm. Unlike some other kids my age, being alone didn't bother me. I was used to the quiet and had plenty of chores to keep me busy. The day they left was spent how it usually is for me, feeding the animals, checking the fences, and fixing an old tractor engine, they had become my new project. As evening approached, 
I settled down in the kitchen, working hard with my screwdrivers and hammer. The silence of the farmhouse was comforting like usual, and I loved growing up here. Night fell, and with it came a sense of unease I couldn't quite shake. It was unusual. The farm was my home, a place where I'd always felt safe. Yet there I was, feeling like a stranger in my own house. I decided to call it a night early, hoping sleep would make me feel better. As I made my way upstairs, the floorboards creaked below me, and I felt even worse. Each step seemed to echo too loudly in the empty house, and each shadow in the hallway seemed a lot deeper and darker. I told myself the silence was playing tricks on me, but I was pretty scared. In my room, the window was open. I didn't remember opening it, but then I had a lot on my mind. Just as I was about to close it though, a noise from the barn caught my attention. A faint but distinct sound of metal clanging. My heart skipped a beat. No one should be in the barn at this hour. Grabbing a flashlight, I headed outside and made my way across the yard. Inside the barn, the sound was louder. I called out, who's there? I then screamed at whoever was there to get off our property, but no one answered. I couldn't see anything. Then, I saw it. An overturned toolbox. All the tools spilled everywhere on the floor. I knew at that moment that someone had been there, and recently. Terrified, I ran back to the house as fast as I could. As I was running though, I could have sworn I heard footsteps chasing behind me, but it was too dark to tell. I got to the door of the house and quickly slammed it shut behind me, locking it as fast as possible. I spent the rest of the night with every light on in the house. I immediately called the cops when I got back inside. Finally, the cops came, and as the sun rose, we could see more of what exactly happened. They found fresh tire tracks outside that definitely weren't from my parents. The police said it was likely someone passing through looking for anything they could steal. Our tools were pretty valuable. They promised to increase patrols in the area, but I was still terrified that whoever did this could come back any day. In the end, my family decided it was time for a change. We moved later that year, leaving behind the farm and its memories, both good and bad. I'll never know if that intruder just wants some tools or something much darker. I'm 17, and last weekend my parents left for a wedding upstate. This marked the first time I was home alone in a new house that we bought last month. I have to admit, for my age, I am still terrified of being left home alone. It's something I'm embarrassed about, but after you hear my story, I don't think you can blame me. Intent on making the most of my time alone, I lined up a marathon of Stranger Things and enough snacks to last me days. It was late into the second night during a popcorn refill that something scary happened. A scraping noise, like metal on concrete, coming from the side of the house. I paused and listened. For around a minute, there was nothing else. Just as I was about to go back to my show, there it was again, closer this time. Now, my house is in a quiet suburban neighborhood in Pennsylvania, surrounded by woods. We often see a lot of wildlife, so I was half expecting this to be a deer or a squirrel accidentally knocking over something in our shed. I flicked on the backyard light and walked over to the window. For a moment, I saw nothing, just trees shaking in the wind. Then I saw something that made my heart sink. A figure darted through the patio, definitely a person. Adrenaline kicked in and I quickly locked the back door. I turned off the living room lights and crouched behind the sofa, watching the windows. The figure reappeared, now trying the back door. My phone was upstairs charging in my room, so I couldn't call for help. Moving as quietly as possible, I made my way towards the stairs, needing to get to my room to call 911. Each step seemed to echo through the house. I reached the top of the stairs, and I heard a loud bang of glass breaking from downstairs. I ran to my room and called the cops as quickly as I could, my voice barely above a whisper as I told the operator my address and what was happening. As I was talking, I heard the distinct creak of footsteps from the floor below. Freaking out, I decided to enter my tiny wooden closet to hide. I moved past some clothes and sat down on the closet floor. Finally, the footsteps from earlier reached the top of the stairs. 
I heard them walking around from my parents' room to my brother's room, and then finally they opened the door to my room. From my hiding spot, I saw their shadow move past. Then they walked closer to my bed, and I saw something that still haunts me to this day. They were a tall guy with greasy, long black hair, wearing a gray beanie and a hoodie. He smelled horrible, like a mix of sweat and a dead rat. He started to look under my bed, and I was praying he didn't check the closet next. The next thing I knew though, I heard a pounding on the front door downstairs, and then it swung open. Suddenly, the police were screaming and running through downstairs. The guy in my room ran off, but I heard the sound of yelling and a thud shortly after. An officer ran up to the closet and called out for my name. I was finally safe. As I walked downstairs, I saw the guy cuffed on the ground. He had a big bag filled with my family's stuff, including my dad's Rolex and my Nintendo Switch. I was let outside and sat down for a few hours, waiting for my parents to return. They heard the news and were terrified, driving back as quickly as they could. Turns out, the guy was known to the police, a petty thief with a record. My parents were shaken, but relieved that I was unharmed. After that night, we got a new security system, and my parents haven't left me alone since. I'm now taking a self-defense class, and I told myself I'll never be that vulnerable again.